Hello. Good evening. Hello, Raghu. Hello, Dai. Hello, One Thing. Hello, Yaxing. Hello. Hello, Maggie. Hello, Ricardo. Hello, Chloe. Hello, Professor. Hello, Adrian. Right, let's give a couple more minutes for everybody to join. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, we can see. Okay. And can everybody hear me good? Yes. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Let's get going. Let's see. All right, uh, let's see. Welcome, everybody. Oh, let me close this door for a second. Okay. All right, let's see. Um, let's take a look at the syllabus and see where we left off. Let's see, is there a question in the chat? Okay. Let's see. Um, yeah, so we are still in the second week, and we are still talking about CSS. So up to this point, you should have a working React.js application deployed to uh, Netlify, and uh, it's been the source is in source control GitHub.com. Um, you deploy it to Netlify, and it has um, at least the first and second assignment there. Uh, the second assignment should uh, it's uh, it's due later this uh, this week. Uh, so the first assignment was to just set up the environment, have it uh, in on GitHub, and deploy it to Netlify. So later this week uh, on Sunday, uh, you'll have the uh, second assignment due, uh, which is uh, a chance for you to practice uh, some of the basic features of uh, HTML, right? learning how to do some uh, basic stuff such as headings. Uh, paragraphs, lists, tables, um, also uh, uh, learning how to how to do uh, you know some some challenges there and apply it to uh, build a uh, the beginnings of a Twitter tweet application that we are going to be uh, building throughout the uh, semester. Uh, so so yeah, so that's uh, that's later uh, due later this uh, week. Uh, this week we uh, introduced uh, CSS, which is a styling. Uh, it's a technology for styling uh, content. Uh, HTML allows you to define or declare uh, the content and the rough layout, uh, and, and uh, give you some default styling, uh, the default fonts, the sizes, and whatnot. But then CSS allows you to override all those defaults. Uh, look and feel, right? You can change the foreground color, background color, borders, uh, and um, uh, uh, today we're going to look at a little things that are a little more advanced, such as laying it out uh, horizontally as opposed to uh, vertically. So we'll take a look at that. And um, uh, we did introduce uh, A3. We started going through the first couple of uh, exercises. Uh, we'll do some more today. And uh, let's see. Um, so next week, uh, the we're going to introduce a, a styling library called Bootstrap, and and basically, you know, as you'll notice uh, this week, as you go through the exercises in CSS and start learning about it, what the mechanics are for selectors, be able to select uh, 
the elements from the DOM and trying to make them look pretty, it's not easy. It's not easy to make things look pretty and professional uh, using CSS, right? So, uh, it, you know, it takes a, a, a lot of experience, a lot of uh, practice of what works, what doesn't work. And so some, some engineers, uh, you know, or some art, artistic folks, uh, you know, dedicate their whole career at making things look uh, professional. So uh, some of these libraries have become very uh, pr uh, popular. Uh, one of them is Bootstrap. So, so next week we'll we'll focus on learning about different libraries, including Bootstrap, Font Awesome, and this this a plethora, right? We're only going to scratch the surface. Uh, but we're going to introduce the uh, you know how they work, how the, how you can include them, load them into your project, uh, but uh, to be able to understand what these libraries do and how they work, right? That's what we're learning today, this week, right? We're learning about CSS and uh, and the, the the mechanics of of applying style to a DOM to DOM elements. So, and then once you know this this week, we're kind of like teaching you the 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 addition tables and the multiplication tables, right? And then next week with the Bootstrap, we'll give you the calculator. Um, all right, so let's uh, focus on CSS. Uh, also, next week uh, we will have our first quiz, uh, Q1, uh, which will be uh, on HTML, right? Everything about HTML, about uh, using uh, declaring paragraphs and headings um, and form elements like input fields, check boxes, radio buttons. Make sure you uh, you go over uh, the uh, you know all those HTML elements, forms placeholders, tooltips, right? Using title for tooltips, uh, all that, right? So just go over that and be familiar with that content. It is open book. Uh, and uh, so I'll be making that available uh, or, you know, maybe next Monday or Tuesday, and then it'll be available for 24 hours. So you can take the uh, quiz anytime then. For the undergrad folks, they will uh, be taking it synchronously. Uh, later, uh, later that week, or uh, either, either, yeah, maybe Tuesday or or Friday, depending on their schedule. Uh, but for the gra graduate folks, uh, it will be remote and it will be available for 24 hours. So you just have to find, you know, you know, 15, 20 minutes uh, where you can sit down and uh, take the quiz uh, on your own as an individual. Uh, and then we'll introduce uh, Simon Four next week. Okay. All right. So uh, let's see. Before we get started, any uh, any questions? All right. Uh, uh, just a reminder. Uh, I am holding office hours every morning from eight to nine. If you are having some trouble, please uh, come, and we can you know do a one on one. Can help you out. Uh, you know, if if there's if there are you know quite a few folks, um, you know I'll I'll need to you know limit the time that I that I, that I have for every one of you for you know ten fifteen minutes. You know, just tons of people. Uh, but for the most part, it has been quiet. Uh, so so you know we've been I've been able to uh, help folks uh, you know quite a bit. So so depending on you know how many folks came, I uh, we can do it just with an open ended and take the whole hour. Uh, uh, unless you know, there's more, many more, All right? So the quiz uh, uh, is uh, next week. I'll probably make it available on Monday, and I'll be say I don't know Monday at eight a.m. right, and it'll be available till Wednesday at eight eight a.m. So for uh, oh, that's what that's forty eight hours. Um, yeah, pr yeah, probably I'll, I'll, I'll do it, make it available Monday morning at 8 a.m. It'll be available for 24 hours till Tuesday at 8 a.m., something like that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, so let's uh, get going. Oh, if possible, move office hours a little late in Sunday because some of us uh, in the West. Oh, the three hours later. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, I see. Yeah, that's a little more challenging. Uh, yeah, I'm curious how many folks are on the uh, on the West Coast. I'll 
I, I'm going to put a poll just to know. Um, okay, so let's uh, talk about CSS. Now, last uh, last time we met, uh, we worked on a few uh, examples, um, and I've made that available in uh, this repository, and it should be uh, linked. The repository that, I, that we're using uh, should be available here, right? So this is uh, my repository, uh, and um, and and then the repository is here. You can get take a look at the the content which leads you right here all right and then you can take a look at the different branches now this is the branch that we worked on last time we met so if you go there um, you'll see some of the html and css examples that we worked on so for on, on a2 uh, notice we created uh, the index.css right we uh, uh we linked it uh, in here in the the html uh, document and and then you know, we worked on several uh, examples, right? Uh, being able to style uh, list tags or individual H2s, a um, couple of uh, blue colors, right? And seeing structure uh, with the immediate uh, child parent child relationship or with the, you know, you know, whether it's an element is included in some other element, right? Uh, we also uh, got going with the third assignment. Right, where uh, we created an index file and started copying and pasting content from uh, the assignment, right? And you know, where, where you have uh, different classes, you have some IDs, uh, some selectors that are nested, right? We played around with some borders uh, and we copied the HTML from this, from the assignment. And then we also copied the CSS also onto this index.css. So we went through a, a few of the assignments uh, exercises, right, just to give you an idea of what we were expecting you to do uh, on your own, right? Uh, so, so I, I did want to work on, on a few more, uh, in particular those that uh, were, uh, work on layout. Uh, be it normally uh, in HTML, things are laid out from top to bottom, and I like to uh, describe. Uh, techniques by which we could uh, render things from left to right, you know, horizontally. Uh, so, so I like to talk about that. I'd also I like to introduce uh, the notion of responsiveness, right? That making an application responsive or being able to adapt to the size of the screen, right? So that uh, you can build applications uh, that uh, can work just as well on widescreen. Uh, laptops or desktop monitors, right? And just as well on smaller screens, you know, maybe even a tablet or even a phone, right? So how do you how do you build that, right? So so I'll introduce a concept today. Uh, we'll do some really simple examples, uh, go through some of the exercises that uh, are listed in the assignment, uh, and then next week when we uh, work on uh, in on Bootstrap, uh, we'll see that uh, some you know, professional folks. Uh, have uh, created some libraries that make it very easy and trivial to make things responsive. But the only way to understand those libraries is to actually do one yourself, right? See a little bit what's behind the scenes, right? So that, uh, you know, when you see it done, you say, oh, yeah, I think I, I know how this works, right? Uh, so, yeah, so I'd like, I'd like to uh, dis uh, discuss that uh, today. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, okay. Uh, also, uh, just just so you know, the uh, it, all all these is the, available in the repository, and as, uh, obviously also in the uh, in the uh, you know one, once it's available in the repository, it also deploys it to uh, to Netlify, right? So, for instance, this was the A two. Assignment, but also A3 is there as well, I believe. Yeah, here's a. Uh, I guess I never created an, a, a link uh, to up here for the assignment. So uh, we should be labs A1, no, A, A3, maybe? No, I guess not. Did we not? Did I not uh, submit it? I thought I did. Did I push it? Yeah, A3. 
Um, not sure why. Maybe they didn't build A2. Oh, yeah, that, that works. Uh, A2. What about the A3? Oh, there we go. Those are the, uh, I just never added the link up here. All right, I'll add a link here so that uh, you can follow along. Okay. Let's um, let's take a look at some of the uh, exercises that we worked on. All right, we had started right here, right? Uh, those are the A2 exercises that we worked on. These are the A3s that we also began towards the end of our lecture uh, last time, right? We we worked on this index here, and uh, let's uh, close all the other ones, other tabs. We we'll probably need the index. All right, and so we can follow along in the assignment. So let's take a look at the assignment. Oops. Huh? So in the assignment, uh, we worked on some of these exercises, right? And I think you can just follow along and and work, work on these, these uh, on your own. I did want to take a look at, uh, we talked about the box. And margins, uh, corners. Okay, so yeah, so let's take a look at uh, some of, some of these over here. Right, so some of these exercises start talking about being able to control uh, dimensions, resizing things, making things bigger, uh, uh, positioning things in a, in, a, in this on the screen in a particular uh, fashion. So I, I did want to describe some of this. Okay, um, so so these are. Uh, you can style dimensions, right? Like width and height. Right. And so let, let's uh, let's let's create this. Uh, let's take a look at this example, for instance. All right, so let me go all the way down. And actually, I'm going to put it at the top because uh, it's just easy to paste it at the top. <laughs> and then copy this. Oops. And I'm just going to put it here. There we go. Okay, so so here we are declaring, let's see, uh, three divs, right? We have um, we have a parent div, and, and then these are three divs. Um, and uh, each div has uh, its own class, and where it declares a couple of uh, uh, BG color yellow, which are declared, I believe, did we declare those? I, I don't think we, we declare them. Uh, well, let's declare them. So notice that the name says BG color yellow, right? So we can guess at what that was supposed to do. Uh, I skipped over several exercises. So those aren't, those were supposed to be declared by the time we got to this. Uh, why do we need div tag? Uh, so, so div is a, um, um, a, a logical grouping of things, right? Uh, it stands for division or uh, like a uh, to divide or break up the content, right? It's just, it just a, a div declares a logical rectangle on the screen, right? That takes up the whole width of the screen. Uh, and then the height of that, of that uh, box right, is as big as whatever you put inside of that box, right? So, so this div, right, just a simple div, say I take that out. So if I remove that, uh, this div is is, is uh, infinitely thin, right? It has no height whatsoever, but it it uh, takes up the entire width of the screen. And as you include things inside of the div, right, maybe other divs, uh, it takes up the the height of whatever it is that you put inside, right? So so a div declares a vertical uh, break, right? So you uh, so this one so this is a vertical break, right? So this is a rectangle from here to here, uh, and then and then it comes other rectangles down below. It pushes everything down down below, right? So this creates three rectangles, right? So one on top of the other uh, that has a portrait, landscape, and square. So let's take a look at what this. Let's run this. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, so we have these uh, dimensions, right? Landscape and square. Right, so, but uh, let me take out the the styling. This styling, I did copy them over. So let me remove them for now. 
just to show you. Okay, so this portrait landscape and square are these rectangles right here, these, these three. And, and then you can group them of, of rectangles within rectangles within rectangles. So you can create a, a, a hierarchy, right? Where, uh, for instance, any, any user interface, right, has that typical kind of uh, boxes, right? So for instance, uh, the, you know, this, this, um, you know, this user interface is, uh, you know, has a whole bunch of rectangles here. Then you have this big rectangle on over here. Then you have another one for the center and then another rect rectangle on the, on the right, right? Uh, then you have this rectangle on the top that kind of pushes everything below it, right? So divs it allows you to create these, uh, these logical boxes that by default, they, they add vertical spacing, right? So, so this portrait here, right, uh, is, a, you know, it breaks this, the, the, the screen uh, vertically, okay? Uh, notice that if I didn't have the divs, if I had no divs, oops, if I didn't have these divs, so let me, let's say I, I remove these for now. Say I, I comment this out for a second. So I remove these divs. And I go back and I refresh. Notice that there is no break, right? There's no vertical spacing because uh, text all by itself, right, behaves in line, right? It draws itself from left to right, right? And then when there's no more, and there's a more space, it just wraps. Whereas divs uh, uh, behave like blocks, right? So content behaves in line, so it just flows from left to right, whereas divs are behave as blocks, right? So there's two basic rendering uh, criteria that the browser uses, you know, overall, right? Things either flow, Right? And they're called inline. They flow inline from left to right and then wrap and there's no more space. Or they render as blocks, taking the entire width of the screen and adding vertical spacing. Make sense? So for instance, dimensions H2s, this H2 here, um, is rendering using the block principle. Right, It's taking up the entire width and it's adding vertical spacing. Right, That's that's how this dimension... Right? So if you if you see... If you ask it how wide you are, you'll see that the width is the entire width of the screen. If you hover over it, right? Uh, if you refresh now, now if I, if I hover over uh, this div for well, the portrait, notice that it is indeed taking up the entire width of the screen. See that? And it adds vertical spacing, so it pushes everything down. Everybody good? Okay. Um, all right. So, so these these BG colors, uh, we never created it. Uh, I skipped over a couple of of, uh, of exercises, so let's, but we can create it. We can we can create it real quick. So the this was meant to uh, add a background color of yellow. Okay, so if I refresh, notice that indeed it makes it uh, yellow. And then uh, this one was supposed to make the background blue. So let's do that. So this was uh, background blue. Okay, so so there it is, blue. Um, and I, I believe there was a red one too. Yeah, oh, there it is, red. So this was background color red. There we go. Uh, and I believe we had declare a foreground color of white. So we can implement that too. So color white, there we go. Oh, okay, excellent. Uh, yeah, that's it, right? So, so what we're going to introduce in uh, in this particular case is that um, you can modify or you can configure the sizes, right, or the dimensions, the width and the height. So by default, if you don't say anything, right, the width is the entire width of the screen. Okay, but you can override it by saying that you want the width to be something else and the height. Uh, the height is the height of something, of a div, the height of a div is based on the uh, how much content you have, right? So if you have uh, lots of contents, uh, let's put spaces there. 
So say you have lots of content in there. Okay, notice that what it's done, right? All these, all this text, um, all the text is flowing in line. And then when there's no more space, it wraps, right? Now, whereas the, the div, the, the, the width is always uh, the entire width of the screen, and, but the height is based on the content that is inside of the div, right? So the more space, you, the more content you have, it just keeps growing, it keeps growing. That's the fall behavior of the divs, okay? Uh, but you can override that. You can override that and say uh, that this dimension portrait, right, I declared it here, and it's this one. So if I uncomment that, I'm saying that this class here, meaning this div who has that class, this div who has that class, I can override the width to be, in, instead of the whole width of the screen, uh, I want it to be 75 pixels, right? And at the height, instead of being whatever the content says, right, I want it to make it fixed at 100 pixels, right? So let's do that. So I'm going to refresh this. And indeed, now the, the, the notice that the height is 100 pixels and the width is 75, right? And notice that uh, it's not wide enough to fit its content, right? Notice that portrait, Right is is a uh, still portrait is still following inline, in that it you know it draws the word, and it tries to draw the next word, but it doesn't doesn't fit right, so it wraps. So that's why it just renders here uh, vertically. Uh, let's see, is a question here? And got it. How is ID different from class and selectors or other selectors and comparisons? Okay, yeah, sure. How do we decide when to use which of the other? So we're never going to use ID, <laughs> uh, although we might show some examples just to point out uh, certain aspects of uh, of ID. But there's nothing that ID does that cannot also be done with classes, right? But the difference is as follows, right? So IDs um, are applied to elements, right, and uh, for uniquely identifying them, right? So for instance, if I if I provide a you, I can name this uh, div to have a unique identifier, right? So you can say, you know, my first paragraph, my second paragraph, my third paragraph. So I can say one, two, three, and so on and so forth. Uh, and the browser and the the IDE enforces its uniqueness. You can't use that ID anywhere else. So there's only going to be one of these divs. Um, and then, so in the class, I'm sorry, in the in, in the index in the uh, CSS. Uh, you can target that individual element, right? And say, oh, I want that to be whatever, right? So for instance, uh, you know, if, I, if I gave you this an ID uh, of uh, paragraph one or something, right? Um, I can target it over here by saying hash P1, right? And I want the font size uh, to be uh, 0 0.5, so half, half the size that it would be there, okay? Uh, so if I do that, notice I, I made the text smaller, so now I can fit more text in there, right, for that div. Now, now, um, so yeah, so, so I can, I can, I'm targeting something that is unique. Whereas classes uh, uh, allows you to uh, target any number of elements, right? So that uh, all the elements that have a particular class, uh, and indeed, what we did here, right? We we said that, uh, for instance, uh, and well, actually, this, uh, uh, anywhere that I I use this background color, right? For instance, I can apply it to this padding over here, right? Not only can I apply it to this div over here, but I can also apply it to this padding. You can say class BG yellow, right? And I, if I refresh, notice that indeed the background of this heading is yellow. So I can, I can group all bunch of different elements, regardless of whether they have an ID or their particular a type, you know, a div or so heading, right? Anybody who uses that class, right, will uh, apply, we, we will apply those, those styles, right? So we can create kind of like a classification or a grouping of elements that have the same class. Make sense? 
Uh, so earlier I said that uh, there's nothing you can do with IDs that you can't do with classes. Um, well, that's only if you ma uh, make sure that you treat a class uh, uh, uniquely, right? That I'm going to use this class only here, right? So that it applies to, so so that it, it, it behaves like if it was an ID, right? IDs are somewhat restrictive, uh, a little bit too restrictive, uh, and and so you can you can achieve the same the same behavior with classes. Okay, so uh, let's keep going. So notice, yeah. So this portrait, I made it smaller so that uh, the the all the text fits in here. But uh, you know, if I if I copy this and paste it again, again, it's not going to fit, right? So right now. It's just spilling over. See this portrait over here? See that it's spilling uh, uh, outside the boundaries of the div. Okay, uh, and we can fix that. Uh, but my but the point I'm trying to make right is that I have overwritten uh, the default behavior. Right, it wanted to by default be the entire width of the screen, uh, and the height. It, I yeah, we I, I wanted to be able to. Uh, move right with the content. Notice that if I if I remove the if I remove the uh, the height, right? If I comment this out and I refresh, notice that now the height, right? It's whatever the content says, right? So it doesn't fit. It's just stretching the entire height. That that's how it wants to behave, right? And same thing with the width. If I don't have a width, then the then the behavior is that it wants to stretch the entire width. Right, so I'm gonna. There we go. So it stretches the whole width, width, and now the content just fits better, right? And, and again, the height will grow the more content that we have. Make sense? Okay, but we can override both. So let's override it and makes it and see what we got. Okay, good. All right. Um, all right. So uh, I'll, I'll talk about a, a, a an attribute uh, a little later, uh, but this this part is bugging me. This this. The spilling of the content uh, as it overflows uh, the boundaries. So I'm I'm going to just give you a small sneak preview. We can configure that. We can say, we can say how to how to handle overflow, right? When content doesn't fit, what should I do, right? Uh, one of the easiest things that you could do is that we can say that there's an overflow. Overflow. Uh, you can you can um, uh, configure the overflow. The overall overflow, uh, whether you overflow uh, vertically, uh, horizontally, or vertically. Uh, so, for instance, uh, overflow X means uh, you know if if the content doesn't fit horizontally, what do I do? Uh, if the content doesn't fit vertically, what do I do? So let's see overflow w Y uh, because Y is the height, right? And so, what do we want to do? Well, there's several choices. It says okay, should I add a scroll bar, right? Uh, should I clip it? You know, should I just click what it's overflowing, right? So if I refresh, notice that, boom, we can clip that, right? Uh, or we can say instead, uh, I want to add a scroll bar. I add a scroll bar. So if I refresh, there it is, it's a scroll bar. See that? So I can I can scroll and so that folks can actually see what the, the rest of the content is, right? Um, so I'm just going to clip it for now. I'm just going to clip it. There we go. So it's, it's it's not there. Everybody good? Okay. Uh, so let's uh, keep going with the assignment. The, the, the so this was the portrait. Okay. Uh, let me put that down here. And notice it's portrait because the the height is taller than the width. Whereas this one, I'm going to style it as landscape. All right. So I'm going to apply that to some other div down here. Oh man! Excuse me. Uh, so this div, um, the I'm applying two classes. Right, we're applying two classes. So uh, meaning that both both styles, actually no three. I'm applying three three classes, and so there's all three combined styles of all the three classes are being applied to this one landscape. Now the 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 background and the foreground right are controlling the the colors, right? The uh, the foreground is white, right? And the background is blue. 
So here's background and foreground. Whereas this one, right, it's controlling the width being wider than the height. Right? So it's landscape. That's why I called it landscape. And 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 so so let's see how that works. If I refresh, notice that indeed, all right, this is landscape. It's wider than uh, taller. Uh, maybe we want to be a little more dramatic and make it a little bit bigger. You know, it's twice as big than tall. Okay. All right. So let's do one more. Uh, let's do this with square. We're going to say that um, uh, dimension square is being applied to this last last div, right? And we're saying that the height and the width are the same. Okay. So for instance, if I refresh, indeed, uh, that is the case. All right. Uh, so, so this is only to point out and to prepare you for a couple more exercises uh, where I can start now moving things. Right? Not only can I style the the, the 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 width and the height, but I can also style where I want these things to, uh, you know, appear on the screen. Right? And so, so there's a couple of of uh, behaviors that uh, we can configure: the relative, uh, absolute static and fixed right there's you can configure the position right uh and and then say and, that, and then you can start moving things uh in the on the screen right so for instance uh, and, and so obviously the browser already has an algorithm to decide where should things appear on the screen right uh, using the principles of inline and and uh, things that are a block, right? Those those two principles kind of decide, you know, where things uh, fall on the screen. But you can override that, just like you can override the width and the height, right? You can also override, right, where things appear in position in rel relative to each other. Uh, so, so let's play around with that. Uh, so here uh, we have a couple more. Uh, a couple more, more uh, divs, right, that I'm going to uh, put above, like that, position relative. Uh, let's see what that looks like. Let's refresh. Uh, so there they are. It sees, right, the you know, portrait, landscape, and square. And, um, and so in the assignment, we're going to introduce the fact of being able to configure the position, not only the x, y, but now position. Uh, and the positions are are determined by four attributes: bottom left and top right, and top. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Left, right, and then top, bottom. Okay. And uh, so the 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 left, right uh, configures the the horizontal position, right? Whereas top and bottom Right, configure the vertical positioning, right, and they are measured from the edges, right, of the container. In this case, you know, it might be the screen itself or the parent container, right. But most likely, what what we're going to be doing is the container is the entire width of the screen, uh, the entire screen, right, the uh, window. So, so, so these these measurements are measured from whatever that is, right. So we're going to measure it from the bottom. We want to be 30 pixels measured from the bottom, or I could have said, you know, 70 pixels measured from the top. Right? Same thing with left. I can say, well, I want to measure from the left, or I want to measure from the from the right. You know, how far I want to be from those edges. Make sense? Uh, so, okay, so that's what these are: bottom left, top left. Uh, so notice that uh, left positions me horizontally, whereas bottom positions me vertically. Uh, so one of the questions, uh, a legitimate question might be, well, what if I provide both left and right, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, so so that's actually a p possible, right? Uh, and and basically what, what it, 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 that works out is that uh, you are referring to the, you know, to how far left is my left side, and how far right is my right side, right? So, so now you're measuring, you know, the measurement of my left edge from the left uh, uh, screen, right? Or my right edge, how far is it from my right screen, right? 
So anyway, we'll, we'll play around with some of those. So, okay, so uh, let's take a look at this. Uh, so position is an attribute that allows you to determine or configure a, what kind of position behavior do we want, okay? Uh, and it has a couple of values, right? As a, a relative, absolute, uh, static, uh, fixed. There's a, there's a few of them, right? And we're gonna see all of them. Uh, so relative uh, means uh, the uh, that these these positions here, bottom and left, should be interpreted, you know, as measured from my normal place of where I would fall. Right. So let's do that. Let's uh, let's grab this. And uh, notice that uh, uh, there's my div. See that? There's my div position relative. All right. And uh, it's called po uh, position relative nudge down right. So let's paste it here. So po uh, position relative nudge up right. Uh, oh, I copied the wrong one. Sorry. Yeah, this is the down right. That's not it. That's not the one I wanted. Sorry. Uh, down right, this one. Let's copy that. Uh, so let's see what that does. All right, so let's refresh. Okay, so notice what happened to the portrait. See that? All right. Uh, maybe we should give it a color so that it's uh, more, you can see it better. So let's say, let's make this um, background uh, blue and we'll change the foreground to white. There we go. So let's refresh. Okay, so all right, so let's let's uh let's remove this style for now. Just a second. Let's refresh. Uh, so this portrait, right? This portrait is it's this div right here. It's this div, okay, uh, which lives in an inside of an other div, right? And the outer div, the background is yellow, right? So this whole thing would be yellow, and then the div inside. Right, the 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 background is blue. Everybody okay? All right, so basically this this portrait is inside of the yellow one. See that? Well, I can target that element in there. I can target that element in there uh, by saying that I want to nudge it a little bit down and a little bit to the right. Okay, and the way I can do that is I'm gonna say, okay, well, wherever wherever you fall, I want to move you based on where you would normally be where would you normally be that's where you would normally go right at the top your div take up the width of the of your parent container and the height of whatever you have inside right so you're behaving like any other div right uh, and adding more spaces below right um, so i guess i could change your position algorithm to be relative all by itself it doesn't do anything Right, just relative. Uh, what it does say is that it says that whatever these top left and whatnot should be based on where I would normally be. Okay, so if I refresh, notice that I am moving you, I am nudging you down 20. All right, let's do it maybe 10. So I nudged you down from the top, I went 20. Right, uh, and you can, I can also nudge you. Uh, from the left, right, I'm going to move you to the right. right so you know, measure from the left, I have 20, not 20 pixels away from from the left. Okay. Uh, Everybody okay? Yeah. Uh, so notice that uh, this is uh, one of the first cases uh, that we see in uh, that things are not, are not placed where we would expect, right? Typically, when we see content, things are very well contained inside of parents. We don't have these kinds of overlapping or overhangs, right? And that's what happens when you start mocking around with the default behavior and styling of the browser. The browser wants to avoid these overhangs, right, and these wrappings and, and things being on top of each other uh, or overflowing like did here, right? It wants to avoid that. 
at all costs. So that's why it uses inline and and blocked, right, to make sure that things are nicely within each other. But when you start uh, uh, overriding that behavior, right, you start you 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 uh, you have the danger, right, of you know finding you know doing these things, right, where things start to overflow, uh, things don't fit, you know, things wrap funny, right? They're they're on top of each other. Okay, uh, so we have to be careful, right, when when we are overriding these things, right, and that's, that that that's behaving as we would expect. Okay. Uh, so let's keep going. Um, so now you have um, this other div that we copied, right? The, let's see, this one right here. And so this one has, let's see, it's another div, right? It's called landscape. So it's uh, this one right here, this landscape. And what we're going to do is that we're going to nudge it up, up a bit, right? And a little bit to the right. Okay, so it's position relative nudge up and right. Okay, and we're just calling it blue and white and whatnot so that we can see it. Uh, okay, so where's the declaration? We don't have it yet. Let's uh, copy it over. I believe it's from the assignment. Uh, down, I think it's this one, right? Or is it down right? Oh no, up right, this one. So let's copy that. Uh, so let's see what this does. So this says, Okay, so find me an element whose class is nudge upright. So it's um, uh, it's this one, right? Nudge upright. And what do we want to do? Okay, I'm going to change it to relative, meaning wherever it is right now, normally, right, which is which is this one, right? It's this one, this landscape over here, where no, wherever it is normally, okay, I'm going to move it uh, from the bottom. I'm going to push it up 30 pixels, right? And then from the left, I'm gonna move it 30 pixels to the right, right? So this is this is measured from the bottom, so I'm pushing up, and this is measured from the left, so I'm, I'm moving right, okay? Uh, so let's see what that does, I'm gonna refresh. And indeed notice, right, that I have pushed the landscape up, and I have pushed the landscape right, okay? And notice what we're doing, right? Notice that we are over, overlapping things, right? Uh, we're overlapping the landscape on top of the portrait. Right? Whether we want to do that or not, whether that's intentional, uh, that's another issue. Right? So uh, one of the things that uh, uh, we ask you to do in the assignments and in the, in the project is that you should avoid things like this, right? Where things start overlapping weird, you know, things are hiding each other, right? Uh, and uh, at, at least don't do that intentionally. I'm, I'm sorry, unintentionally. Uh, you know, make sure that if it's doing something, it's because you want it to do it, right? And uh, uh, and you meant to do that, right? Not, not that you're doing something, it's not behaving right, and says, oh, well, you, know, you, you did check to see. Okay, so so there we go. Uh, so, okay, so how is this overlapping uh, with the area of another div, isn't it supposed to only move within that particular area of the div? Uh, well, no, here here we are applying. So this over here, we are applying it to the inner div, right? So notice that this div is nested. Right? So this is nested inside of this one. But this one, we are moving the whole thing, right? So this there's no nesting here. Uh, you know, just like if we if we would have applied this nudge, we would have applied it to the one above, right? So we we are we are moving the parent div, not the child div, okay? So but here we're leaving the parent where it normally is. We're moving the child with respect to the parent, okay? There we go. All right. Um, and so. You know, to your question, right? If this would have been another div, right? If this would have been another div, say, div like this, like that, uh, and this would have been class uh, BG red and foreground white, right? If we would have applied this nudging not to the parent, but instead applied it to the child. Then yes, 
it would have done what you would expect it, right? So it is the landscape, right, that is moving from its parent. Uh, and notice that it's now floating outside of its parent, <laughs> right? Uh, because we moved it so much that it's no longer even inside of its parent. Okay. But that's not what we're going to do. So let's put it back uh, the way we want it. There we go. There we go. Uh, yeah. And let me take out this. Oops. Yeah, let's remove that. Okay. Um, okay, so um, yeah. So yeah, make sure that if you are overlapping something is because you meant to do it and it wasn't just a mistake, okay? Um, okay, so one of the questions, a one legitimate question that you might, uh, you might make, it says, well, Okay, these two things are overlapping. Why is it that it is the blue on top of the yellow and not the yellow on top of the blue? Right, who, who determines that? Well, if you don't say anything, the default behavior is that later things are rendered on top of prior things, right? So because it's div, so in the order of the document. Right? So, so this, this one here is rendered first. So the yellow box is rendered first uh, and then followed by the blue box, right? So it's rendered after the yellow one. That's why the blue one falls inside uh, on top of the yellow, okay? All things being equal, right? Uh, they're, they're, uh, uh, it is uh, rendered in document order, okay? Uh, now, now, because now we're talking about things being on top of each other, where normally this would not happen, right? You would not have things on top of each other. Uh, that means that we are kind of starting to talk about depth, right? That that there is an ordering, not, not, there's a positioning, uh, uh, you know, in and out of the screen, not only left, right, and top down, but also in and out, right? Of 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 the of the Z uh, axis, right? So we have the X axis horizontally, we have the Y axis. Uh, vertically, but now we're talking about a z-axis, right? Uh, so, so uh, we can control the default behavior of the depth. Okay, uh, so by default, everybody has the same depth, right? Everybody's at the same at the same plane, uh, and the way we decide that something is on top of each other is not because things are on top of each other in, a, in the sense of depth, that things are in front of each other, but it's because things that are rendered in a particular order, okay? Uh, but we can, we can control this, right? And if we don't like the way it's behaving, right? Uh, we can control this by using what is called a Z index, right? Uh, so uh, right now, the Z index, everybody has the same Z index, right? Everything's flat, it's a flat world. Uh, but you can control it. You can give it a, a higher Z index, for instance, to the yellow and say, well, I know the order of the document says that I should render below the blue one, right? But I can override that. I can say, well, well, I don't want to do that. I want the yellow to be on top of the blue. Right? So I can give it a higher Z index. So, so this one... Um, this yellow one, we can create a class. Uh, and we call I don't know. We can call it uh, a bring, you know, bring to front. Right. I want to render uh, above, and so so we can, can declare this right as follows. We can say dot bring to front, and we can give it an index, right, of say a thousand. And so that when we render it, it doesn't work. Uh, wait, what? Uh, bring to front, Z index, bring to front. Huh? Why are you not rendering? Let's see. And uh, now, no, no pixels. 
Uh, let's see. Bring to front. Oh, it's not finding it. Why are you not finding it? Bring to front. Did I misspell it? Bring to front. Bring to front. No, it is. And it's a class. So my browser doesn't think that I have. Oh, there it is. Okay, so it is there. And what's the Z index for this? Oh, do I need to create a Z index for this one too? A lower Z index? Index, 100. No. Z index. Am I misspelling it? Z index. Uh, Z index, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Z index, one, two, three. And am I spelling it? So one, two. And I do it for the fine Z index. Yeah, so I have you do Z index. Z index 10. Z index bring to front. Yeah. Class, blah, 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 blah. Bring to front. Okay, let me, let me get to this example when we, when we get here. Uh, position. Uh, let's take a look at this. Fixed position. Uh, Z in this. Let me copy this. Maybe I'm, mis I'm misspelling something. Uh, Z index. And let's see what that renders as. Render. So I say you have Z index right there. There it is. The, the same example as we've had before. And. Uh, oh, okay. And then I need some positions. Oh, okay. I haven't done these examples just yet, so this won't work. <laughs> right. This assumes that you're doing it in a particular order. We do it in a particular order. All right, so I, I can't work on those until I do all these other ones. Um, so anyway, uh, go through those. Uh, let's. Uh, I, I do want to uh, at least cover one more uh, type of position before I go into those. Uh, so we talked about relative. Uh, there's a few more. There is absolute, uh, and there is fixed. Okay. Uh, so so absolute. Uh, whereas whereas uh, a relative moves you relative to where you are right now, absolute moves you uh, based on from your where your current parent is, right? And it positions you, you know, uh, based on on uh, not where you would go, but based on where where you uh, where your parent is, right? So, for instance. Uh, if your parent is the the overall window, then you would maybe maybe measure from the top left down so many pixels, and then and then right so many pixels, as opposed to where you would normally end up, right? Uh, so so let's take a look at that. So let's look at these uh, absolute position exercises, and let's like, go over a couple of these, right? Uh, so so let's uh, render this and see what they render as. Okay, absolutely. We're starting always with the same three boxes, with the same exact three boxes. Uh, but, but, uh, we need this position relative, which I believe we ask you. Okay, there it is. We have to declare this position relative, which I didn't. Let me put that in there. So, position relative. The only thing that it does is that it changes your Position attribute to be relative instead of whatever the default is, right? Uh, so, so that's that's making this right here a relative position, right? This div, okay. And what that does too, notice that position relative is not setting any. I'm not moving this div, right? It's wherever it is. 
That's, I'm going to leave it there. I'm just setting it to be relative. But I don't actually move it, right, left, right, up, down, or anything. I leave it where it is, so I'm not configuring any actual movement. I'm only changing its, its, uh, its attribute to be position to be relative. And what that does, right, it sets this particular box, right, as the, uh, as the anchor from where we are going to measure all other dimensions and positions, okay? It's kind of, you know, declares that this is my zero, zero, right? My Cartesian, uh, you know, graph. Right. I, I could move the Cartesian graph wherever I want, right? Where I can draw the the X and the Y uh, axes, I can draw them anywhere I want in space, right? Or on my on my notebook or on or on screen. Well, by declaring a particular box as relative, says, okay, I'm gonna measure everything else is measured from this one div. Okay. This is my zero zero. Okay, so my zero zero is wherever this div falls. That's my zero, zero. And so my other ones, okay, uh, I'm gonna, I have, a, I have a few divs here. I have a few divs. Uh, we have the portrait, right, which is, um, this portrait, this one over here. We have the landscape, like just before, just the same exact examples of before, right? Um, all right, this is position relative. Uh, this one is portrait, right? Landscape and square. That's why they have those those sizes. And the backgrounds and the foreground colors are also set, right? Uh, but we're gonna play with these guys here. Position, absolute 10, 10. Position absolute 50 50 and position absolute 20 20, under 20 20. Okay. Uh, so, what absolute is going to do is going to set it to absolute instead of relative. Uh, and then, the, and then the, the horizontal and the vertical, I'm going to set them to 10 10, 50 50, or 120 and 20. Okay. So, let's do that. Let's see for the example. There's my 10 10. So, let's grab that. And let me put it in there. So what? So this is going to be applied to this here. And I'm going to change this div where it would normally fall. I'm going to move it from the top 10, right, left 10. So where do we measure these 10 and 10? Well, it's from wherever our positive uh, relative uh, is set. I'm going to, let me change it, its background. I'm going to say, uh, uh, BG color, uh, let's say gray, right, which doesn't exist, so that you can, you can, we can, we can see what it looks like. Uh, so let's, let's uh, say gray. Let me change the background color. Background color to be gray. Uh, oops. I didn't mean to do that. Okay. All right. So, so this is our div. This is our div, the outer div, this one right here. Okay. I know that changed the color gray. So you can see what it, what it is, right? Uh, it's behaving like a normal div, right? It's taking up the entire width and the height is, it's the, uh, it's a combination of everything that's, it's in it, right? That's its height. Um, so, so because I have set its position relative, right? I call it position relative. There it is, position relative. Position relative, position relative. So this is relative. That means that all the other positions of its children, right? They are going to be measured from this corner right here, right? Of the bigger gray box, right? So if I move the portrait, if I move the portrait, let's see what happens. And I say absolute 10, 10, absolute 10, 10, look what happens. I'm saying, when I say absolute, I'm going to say, I'm going to move you uh, from the top 10 pixels down 
and 10 pixels from the left. From where? Not from where you are, but from this corner, which happens to be that same corner as you. So it, you know, whether I use relative or I use uh, absolute, it's like, it, almost no difference for that for that box, right? We already know what relative does. If I say relative, right? If I say relative, we know already what happens. Uh, we we are only moving that portrait where from where it would normally be. Yes, but from absolute, look what happens. Look what happens. Something crazy. Let's refresh. Okay, the portrait moved like we would expect. Top, you know, from the top ten. And from the left hand, yes? But then the other two, what happened to the other two? They were, they were, they, they got bumped up. And the reason is that the, because I've changed the position of portrait to absolute, I am basically removing it, removing the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the browser is abdicating responsibility for the position of this of this box right saying hey put it wherever you want you're responsible for this uh, for this box okay i am not going to include it in the calculation of all my other boxes right before right when um when i didn't have this right normally the reason landscape is down here is because portrait is above it, right? Right. This landscape, if this is 120 pixels high, then landscape is just going to be 120 pixels lower. And the reason square is down here is because you have portrait and landscape that are on top of it, right? And they're both pushing down on square. If you remove portrait, right, if you just you know, just remove portrait, right? The the blue and the red go up, boom, right? So that's exactly what happens when I change the position to be absolute. When I change it to absolute, I am removing the box from the normal calculation of the positions of all the other elements. It does. There's nothing else. There's. It's not there anymore to push down. Now it's free to float wherever it wants. Okay. Uh, question on the chat. Let's see. Uh, so, do you mean the parent has? Let's see. Why can't I? Oh, you mean uh, a parent has to be relative to leverage absolute? Uh, no, you could do absolute. So say say okay. Yeah, good question. Say I remove this relative. Say I remove this relative. Okay. If I don't do it, so if I do that and refresh, uh, notice notice the portrait. What happened to the portrait? <laughs> okay, notice where it is. It is being measured from the top left corner of the window. Okay. So so absolute is not really absolute, right? Absolute is measured uh, from the closest parent. Right from the closest parent uh, that has a relative position. Right? So the body, the outer body, right, has a relative position. Okay, uh, and it's at zero zero, and so portrait now is being measured uh, with the with the screen. Okay, so I can scroll. Notice I scroll, uh, and and the body is moving up and down. Right, the body is you know, being up and down. Or I can I can say if I change it to fixed, I change it to fixed and I refresh. Notice what happens. It still looks like it, nothing happened, right? But notice what, when I start scrolling, see that it's no longer it doesn't no it no longer moves with the rest of the content. Okay, so if it's absolute, then it's relative to the body. So here the body is moving scrolling with the rest of the content. Right, uh, uh, and if I say fixed, uh, it means that it's no longer relative to the body; it's actually relative to the window. 
right? Only if I move the window, right? If I move the window, the, the, the portrait moves with the window. Make sense? Right, so now portrait is relative to the window, right? Uh, so absolute is relative to its parent, is relative to its parent, and you can set its parent. If you don't set the parent, then the then the parent is the the body. Okay, uh, but if you set position relative, now the parent is the closest. It's the closest parent that has a relative. The closest parent that has a relative. <laughs> uh, so now is going to be measured against my my gray box. See that is relative to my gray box. Everybody okay? Right? In all three cases, absolute removes the box or, or the rectangle from its normal calculation of the other positions of other siblings, right? Of other elements, right? It's free to float, right? Relative to its parent. But all the other ones right, are not affected by its position. So it could very well fall on top of other elements. Yes? Okay. Um, yeah, so that's absolute 10 10. So let's try now with uh, this uh, landscape here. Oops. Change this landscape. Uh, question. So you know, what happens if the parent div is relative and the child is fixed? Uh, so fixed just ignores everything. Uh, fixed is always relative to the window. Right, no matter where it falls, no matter where you put it, right on the screen, fixed uh, is based on the on the on the top window. It ignores everything else. Okay, um, so so first okay, so absolute fifty. Let's copy that. Let's see. Uh, so absolute fifty fifty. Oops. So let's paste it in here. And this is being applied to this one, 50-50. So what is this going to do? It's going to, uh, the landscape is this blue one, right? It's this blue one. It's going to remove it from the normal rendering so it can freely float around relative to its parent. And the parent is the gray. So if it's 50-50 and from the top is 50 and left 50, that means that it's going to measure from this corner right here 50 from the left and 50 from the top. So it's going to move it down 50 and over 50, right? Um, and uh, and since it's no longer pushing down the red box, the red box is going to go up, okay? So let's see if that's true. Let's refresh. There we go, right? So notice that landscape is now 50 from the left and 50 from the top, okay? Uh, and the square you know, bumped up because there's no blue to push it down. Okay, everybody good? All right. And finally, the red one, it's this one. So I'm going to copy that. And this is the, the, the red box. Let's see what that does. So what does it what's it doing? So presumably I'm gonna do an absolute. So measured again from the parent relative here. And I'm gonna do top, so 20 down and 120 over on the left, right? So I'm gonna refresh. So it pushes it all the way. Now notice that now the the parent doesn't have anybody inside. Well, I mean logically it does, right? But the the height of the parent was based on the height of the children. But because now they're all the children are absolute, none of them are contributing to the width or to the height of the parent. That's why you don't see the gray anymore, right? The gray is gone. Okay, so so uh, we could, uh, the gray here, uh, uh, background, we could make this uh, height, we say min, height 20 pixels so that 
uh, at least it has some height. There it is. It has some height, even though all its children are absolute and then none, are, none of them are contributing to the actual height. Okay? So that's why it became infinitesimally small. Uh, three. three. And this is too dark. So light, light blue, yeah. Anyway, okay. All right, so everybody's still with me? All right, okay. All right, hold on a second. Uh, it's very warm here. Let me take a butt stop my sweater just a second. So are you still with me? Uh, does position does position uh, has a default uh, value? Uh, I believe it's static is the default value. Okay, let's take a look at a couple more. Oh, okay, so fixed. We already saw what fixed does, right? Uh, so let's copy fixed and just show you what that does real quick. Uh, let's see, fixed. And so this fixed, so I'm making it a, a square. Uh, the background color is blue and the foreground color is white. Okay. Uh, and I'm making the position fixed. Okay. And as a position fixed, the value. Copy that, and let's bring that over to the code. There we go. So I'm going to set it to fix, which we already know what it's going to do, right? It's going to make it so that its position is measured from the window, not its parent, right? or the, even the body. So it's not going to scroll with the uh, with the body, right? And so from so this time we're going to measure from the right. And notice I'm saying right zero pixels, meaning I want it to be right plush with the right hand side and then bottom 50 means that from the bottom i want to measure you know i want to be away from the bottom not exact pixels right, i'm telling you now in in in, uh, in percentage right, so i'm saying i want to be 50 percent of whatever the height of the screen is right so if the screen is 200 pixels high then I want to be at 100, right? If it's 500 pixels, I want to be at 250, right? That's the, the height of bottom. So let's do that. Let's see what that does. And so let's see. So this fixed right here, there's fixed. So the bottom, the bottom of this is 50% the height of whatever that is. So, so if we make this uh, shorter, notice that fix is moving and this bottom here is always half right above and below okay uh, we could have said instead from the top and if i refresh now the top is measured 50 percent uh, of whatever the overall height of the screen is Does that make sense okay uh, so so now if i and notice that if i scroll Right, it's going to ignore the scroll. It's always going to be there at all, at all times. Right, this one is, is uh, very useful if you want to, you know, create some, maybe some at the top, uh, like a menu that doesn't move, right? Uh, that follows the, the 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 whole content. So it, and it's not bothered by the scrolling, right? Where you, you know, for instance, here, you know, notice that as I am scrolling, notice that the tab and the input fields here are fixed. They don't scroll with the content. Same thing with my IDE, right? If I scroll up and down, notice that the top menus don't scroll as well, right? So you can achieve that effect by making, you know, building the menu and, you know, and the icons and tabs, right? You know, build, you know, drawing that on the screen, you know, this drop down and all these icons, right? Putting it in a div, that has a fixed position at the top, right? And just leaving it there uh, so that it doesn't move with the with the rest of the scrolling. 
Make sense? So yeah, so VIX can can do that. Uh, Z index. Okay, maybe are we ready to do this, this Z index? Uh, so let's see if we can try out the Z index. Uh, and the Z index 10. Okay, question. Uh, how is top 50% and bottom 50% are in different places? Shouldn't both? It's measured from the edges. It's measured from the edges. So it's 50% to the edge, right? And Or 50% from the top of the top edge or the bottom edge. Yep. So it's not, it's not centering the content, right? It's not putting the content in the middle. It's either putting the top in the middle or the bottom in the middle. Okay. Yeah. So it's not saying this, this, uh, it's not saying that the center of the box needs to be 50% down. It's either saying that the top is at 50% or the bottom is at 50%. Not that the, that it's at the center. If it would be the center, then yes, it would always be in the same place, right? Because it doesn't matter how, what, how high this is, right? The center is always in the center. Okay. Uh, and so, yes, it would be always, it, it would be uh, irrelevant where you say top 50% or bottom 50%, it would be in the same place, right? But no, it's measured from the, you know, from the top to the edge, top edge, or from the bottom to the bottom edge, okay? So that's why it's different. And it depends on how high it is, right? Uh, if it's if it's very, very tall, uh, then the 50% is going to, you know, push the bottom 50% and then the, and the top is probably gonna, not going to fit. Right, it's gonna spill over the top, or vice versa. Right, if I, if I measure from the top, it'll put the top in the middle, and then it would be it would grow the bottom and not 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 fit at the bottom. Right, so you have to be careful. Um, all right, so the Z index. Let's see if uh, we get to uh, uh, this to work. Uh, so let's see, Z index example. Just paste it there, and let's see what that does. So let's render that. Okay, so we have portrait landscape and square. So let's look at the code. Let's see if it makes sense. Uh, so we have uh, position relative. And let's see, we have portrait. And we have landscape. And we have square. Okay. So if we didn't have this, what would happen? Let's see. Let's refresh. Okay, so normally it would render yellow, blue, red. Right? Because... Uh, they are rendered in the order uh, that they're declared, right? So we first render this one, which is the yellow one. Then we render the landscape, which is the blue one, right? And then finally, we render the square, which is red, right? In that order, yellow first, then blue renders next on top of the yellow. And finally, we render the red on top of the blue. But in this case, the we are bringing to the front the blue one, right? Bring to the front, Z index, bring to the front. And by saying that the index is 10. So it's higher than others, right? So for instance, that's why when we render it, uh, the yellow, the, 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 the blue uh, renders the top of the square, okay? Um, we can create another Z index. You know, bring front uh, two. I don't know. <laughs> so we'll say maybe this is 20. So now we can apply it maybe to the yellow one, right? With, a, with an even higher index, right? So let's apply it to the yellow. So here's the yellow. Uh, this one right here. So let's apply it to that. And if we do that, notice that indeed now the yellow is on top of the blue even though it's it's being rendered first right uh so it's a uh, so you could reverse we are entirely reversing the way this would normally render right instead of being blue on yellow and red on yellow on blue it's uh, yellow on blue and blue on red right so we can change the complete order okay so i'm not quite sure where i broke <laughs> the previous example if i was misspelling something you might want to you know maybe rewind and see where i went wrong um okay so what I did want to cover uh, is floating content, right? So floating content uh, a lot is going to allow us to do some really, really powerful things, right? So if uh, if you notice, um, 
the common thread through all the content that you can build using HTML is that what it wants to do, so HTML was designed to you know, be just a, a long scrolling uh, screen, right? We just scroll, scroll, scroll. So, so things normally grow, right? Top to bottom, and it just, you know, keeps going and longer and longer and longer, right? So it was, uh, it was designed for, you know, long papers, research papers, where you just keep reading, you know, the first section, second section, third, blah, 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 introduction, context, conclusions, references, right? And everything just flows from top to bottom, you know, uh, vertically the the uh, original uh, design of the html way back you know in the 90s uh, late 80s uh, did not consider uh, things that we wanted to render horizontally right uh, which is actually very common you know especially in print media is very common that you break up content you know, horizontally, right? You know, like a newspaper or a magazine, right? And one thing to make it easier for us to read is that, you know, we don't have long paragraphs. Instead, we break them up into columns so that the, so that the eyes don't get tired having to go from from one end, edge to the, of the screen all the way to the other edge, and then going back and finding and make sure that you jump to the next line. Instead, we make smaller columns Right, so that we can go real quick, left, right, left, right, left, right, and just keep reading. Okay. Well, that was not the initial intent of HTML. It did not have. It doesn't have any native way of doing it. Well, that's not true. Actually, tables. You know, tables allows us to do right. right? You can you can declare you know rows and multiple columns, and then put content in the columns, and you can achieve that. And that's actually a, a very common way of doing that way back when when HTML just came out. Uh, but really, that was not the intent of tables, right? The intent of tables was for tabular data, right? It was just to, you know, uh, you know, each row was basically a record, right? And each column were different fields. It was not really intent intent for that. Even though, you know, we misuse tables all the time for that kind of purpose, we should not, right? Instead, uh, we should use CSS to accomplish that, right? So how do we do that? How do we accomplish columns right uh using uh, css okay so let's take a look at that uh, so the way we're going to accomplish that is to use what we call in css floating right uh, so these floats okay let's uh let's play around with some of this so let's create here let's grab some of these floats and paste them at the top of our uh, screen here uh let's see this is H3, Cascade style sheet, yada, yada, yada. Right, I'm pasted here, float. Um, and what, what's this? Let's see, let's look at this, right? So we have a div here. Uh, we have another div. So basically we have three divs. We have an image. We have an image. And we have another uh, div, okay? And so, so let's see how this normally would render. We have dimension portrait. So these are all portrait, right? Uh, the background here is yellow, blue, and red. Okay. Okay. So let's see how that renders. Okay. There we go. So we have yellow, blue, and red. And, and it's behaving like div, like divs, right? Where you have the height, uh, and they're all portrait, right? So the height is taller than, than the width. Makes sense, right? Different colors and whatnot. Okay. So, so and it's behaving like it like we would expect, right? That it's uh, rendering uh, from top to bottom, right? And it's pushing everything down. But we would want these presumably to render from left to right, you know, in in, hor in a horizontal fashion. So how do we do that? So the way we do that is by using float. Okay, so float, like the name suggests, allows things to float right, to one direction, right, either to the left or the right. Okay, so let's uh, let's declare float, float left, the class. Uh, we can say dot float left. Uh, we're going to change, override the float attribute to be left. And what does that do? Say next, it's somewhat behaving what we'd expect, right? It's a uh, 
uh, it's rendering it uh, horizontally, uh, just floating one after another. Right? So float, and then and then once it finds the next element on its left, right, it pushes it the content to the right. Right. So it's kind of behaving the way we'd expect. Right. Float left. And now float right. Float right. Um, if we're going to apply float right to this this image here, this image, we're gonna we're going to float it to the right. So it's gonna go all the way to the right side of the screen, and we're going to change its its height to be a hundred because it's loading an image that's way too big. I'm going to change it to its height 100 so that it's probably the same height as my float here. So let's refresh. There's my image, right? But notice that the that the image wants to go right, and these other uh, divs want to go left. But actually, notice that everything else wants to kind of float around and like wrap uh, and and keep keep uh, doing the float, right? Uh, what we've done is that we have we have broken the normal uh, flow of the content, right? And now everything wants to float, and it's like it's like an, an attribute that is on, and it's being inherited for the rest of the uh, 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 all the other elements, right? So everybody wants to wrap around, right? And and wants to like kind of continue floating left, right, uh, horizontally. So we need to be able to stop it. We have to be able to stop it. Says stop. I don't want no more floating. Go back to your original behavior. Okay, so so to do that, right? We we can we can, we can use a clear, clear, clear allows you to say stop floating right or stop floating left or stop floating in both directions. Just just go back to the original uh, behavior, right? Of inline and and block and whatnot. Okay, so so let's uh let's apply that to this div, kind of kind of saying this is where it ends. Right, we're gonna stop floating left, right. This is where it ends. Uh, go back to, and you're after this, go back to where you were. Right. Uh, so let's copy that, and let's paste it here. So that's that's configuring this last div here. So saying it's done. Right. Uh, so if I do that, notice that everything goes back the way it was. Uh, my two. My three floating left are floating to the left, and the image is floating to the right, and everything else goes back to where, uh, where the way it was. Okay, so using this technique, using this te this technique is a very powerful tool that is going to allow us to uh, uh, declare things in columns where normally you would not be able to do that, right? Uh, without using without misusing uh, tables. Okay. Uh, so, so this idea, right? If you if you if you use it correctly, you can create, you can recreate, right? The behavior of tables, right? Rows and columns, right? Kind of like a grid, right? So here's an example of building a whole grid layout, right? So let's copy this, right? And just put it here. Let's see. And uh, wait, did I copy this correctly? Oh wait, I'm missing something. Oops, wait. I think I'm missing this bottom half. Huh? Wait, that's this. Oh, it's not copying the bottom. Wait, what's going on here? Oh, it's be is it because it's not letting me edit this? Why are you not letting me huh? edit? And uh, where were you? There we go. Okay, now I can copy this whole thing. Oh, wait, it's not. What? Are you kidding me? It doesn't let me copy just that column. Oh, terrible. All right, whatever. I'm going to paste that. And then I'm just going to go here, copy that, and paste the whole thing down. All right, so let's take a look at this content. It's quite long. 
Um, so basically what I'm doing here is creating several divs, right? Where the the top div is one row, right? And then each, all the other divs are going to be columns, right? In this row, right? So you have a, a column, a, another column, a, here's another grid. Oh, actually, okay. Now there's a, there's a whole bunch of examples. So let's not do all of them. All at once, right? Because otherwise, we're gonna. Yeah. So let me let me just look at the first example, just this one. And grid row. There we go. And so basically, this is a row that presumably I want to make two columns, right? Uh, and so this this column is presumably going to be half the page, half page. So presumably they're going to be like fifty fifty. One of them is going to be yellow, the other one red. Right, let's see what that renders right now. Okay, so it's just, just the left side, left half, and this is the right half, which is this one and that one, right? Uh, but right now, they're not behaving the way they're supposed to, right? We have the grid. Uh, let's let's change it to gray so you can see. So so you have this... this uh, so you have content above, say, so you can see it. Let me put it. Let me put some content in between so you can see. Right, so you have this outer div, and inside you have two divs, right? The left half and the right half, right? Okay, so so that's I, I only added this content so that you could, you could see that it's indeed uh, uh, an outer rectangle, yes? Uh, and then I would, I would like to have these two behave as two columns. So how do we do that? Uh, so we could use float. We could use float to do that. And so, so we need. Let's see. We need the the grid row, and the grid row. I believe there it is. Um, I'm saying that this this uh, this div is going to uh, float all its all its children to the left, right, to create the columns. But then it's going to clear the behavior outside. So outside is going to be cleared. So that the inside only going to float, right? So, so the row, right? The row is going to let everything that is inside float, right? But then, outside this div, it's going to clear any floating mechanism, so it doesn't spill over to the rest of the HTML. Okay, uh, and then the the uh, grid column, the column. I'm going to call it half page so that I'm going to set the, so let's not float first. Let's not float for first, right? And so this, this width is just going to say that both of my elements are going to be half whatever the size of the screen is, right? So notice if I, if I, if I change the, the size of the screen, notice that my two divs, the widths are half of whatever the screen is. And then I'm going to float them both. And what's that going to do? Is going to have so that you know the left side is going to you know obviously float to the left, but then the right, which used to be at the bottom, is going to you know wrap around and take up that screen. Right now, uh, this works because they're both 50-50. Uh, if one of them was was a little bit bigger than the other, uh, then they would both not fit, right? And then it would wrap. Okay, uh, but you know, I'm making sure that everything adds up to, to 100% or less than 100%. Right? So notice that if I if I say 30%, that still works. Obviously, it's not. Uh, you know, it's not it's not taking up the whole screen. And I don't know. Okay, wait. Why is my clear not working? All right, I'll take a look at that later. So 50 it takes up the whole width. Right. So let's play around with a couple more examples. Right. Where uh, let's create another row, grid row. I might be missing here another div for the grid row, the first grid row. So that might might have been a typo. If you started working on this, that might be a typo. Uh, how is top fifty percent? Okay. Uh, so let's try the second example, which is another row. 
which is another row. And I'm going to put it down below. So it's another row that I'm creating a div. Uh, and then and now these columns, I'm going to call it two thirds and two thirds. Well, actually, no, this one's going to be a third on the left hand side, and this is going to be two thirds. Obviously, it's going to be one third plus two thirds, that's three thirds, that's the whole width of the screen, right? And a third is like 33%, right? And two thirds is like 66 or 67%, right? Uh, so let's see what that looks like. So if I refresh, uh, I have the right two thirds. And what happens to, wait, right two thirds? Where's my left third? Huh? Where'd my left third go? <laughs> huh? BG green. Foreground white. Uh, where are that? Where'd it go? Uh -huh. Counter background color green. Oh, I know what I know what happens. It's actually there, but you can't see it. Yeah, there is my third. Uh, it's because I don't have BG color green. That's what. It, that's why it is. Okay, so let me. Let me define it here real quick. The class is that we want the color, background color to be green. There it is. Okay. So left third and right two thirds is not really doing anything, right? It's behaving just like regular divs. But if I change their width, right, of the third and two thirds that is declared here, let's copy that. Notice what happens, right? They're both being floated, float, float. But one of them is going to be 33% width and the other one is going to be 67% width, right? Wide, right? So if I do that, notice that, yep, indeed, I have a, a third on the side, on the left side and a two thirds on the, on the right hand, which is a very common layout for screens, right? Notice that it's very common uh, in, in here. So this left side, maybe it's a, uh, like 25%, right? But you could you could resize it. So this is like a like a third on the left and two thirds. It's a very common way of laying out user interfaces, right? Where you have a third on one side and then two thirds on the other side, uh, or maybe you could have several, right? That are kind of like that, where you have maybe 20% on one side, 20% on the other side. That's 40, and then 60% in the middle, right? That adds up to 100%, right? So we're looking at ways to lay out content. Right and say how what are the relative sizes of columns uh, that that so that it allows us to lay out content using these techniques. Uh, so okay, let's do one more, and then I'll let you go. Uh, so here's the another grid row, right where you have 20, 60, 20. Oh, is what I, <laughs> I mentioned earlier, right? Uh, so so let's uh put it down here. Let's see how that renders. So right now it's just the sidebar, which should be the left sidebar, the main content, and then the sidebar on the right-hand side, which right now they're not laid out like that. But if you add the styling with floats and the widths and whatnot, okay, um, it it's uh, going to allow us to declare that kind of layout, right? So we're gonna say that the uh, the left sidebar is 20%, the main content is 60%, and the right sidebar is also 20%, right? So if we refresh, notice indeed that the sidebar 20% set content and sidebar on either side. So it's a very common, you know, uh, layout, right? You know, just like this user interface, like the IDE 20, 60, 20, right? Uh, so that's how you would achieve it. Now, so, so, so in this, in this, this week, you're learning all these techniques and, and how to do this from scratch. Now, in reality, you know, when you go out there uh, and um, uh, and you start producing this this layout, you're probably not going to do this from scratch. I mean, you you know what what you would do and how it works and and the principles, right? Uh, but more commonly, you'll you'll use either libraries that are already created for you that somebody already, uh, uh, you know, make it look very, very professional uh, or commercial libraries that, that the company might have purchased, uh, or there's a whole bunch of open source versions. We're going to be using Bootstrap next week, 
and you'll you'll see that you know somebody has already declared all these classes, right? Uh, we just need to learn what they are, how they behave, right? Read the documentation, and then apply these classes, right? So you know to apply the layout that we want, right? Uh, but we could not do that before understanding what's happening behind the scenes, and that's the intent of this of this lecture, right? It's for you to you know understand what's happening behind the scenes so that you can better use these libraries when you know when you get to use them. Okay. Anyway, uh, that's uh, that's what I had for you today. Uh, I want I wanted to you know cover some of the layout and how that works so that uh, we'll have a better use of uh of how to do things using the the libraries i'm going to cover next next lecture uh any questions all right if there are no questions then um uh, have a great evening everybody remember there's a quiz uh next week uh, and um, obviously, assignment uh, is due on on Sunday, and I have office hours uh, in the morning from eight to nine. Uh, let me see what's the interest in moving that uh, to a later time slot. I'll uh, I'll have a poll later on. All right. Good night, everyone. <laughs>